Hello and welcome to Canotillo Combos, the official Canotillo ISD podcast. And uh, we're back from fall break. Uh, we're here with our fearless leader, Dr. Pedro Galavis. Boom, boom, boom. Is that our theme song? You changed it. Boom, boom. What was our theme song before? I don't know. What was it? <laughs> you, were, you were just going off. <laughs> what was that? You know what's <laughs> in my head? Something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what's, what was that movie when uh, they used to fight in the streets at night? Used to get The up. Warriors? No. There's a movie like Ed Norton or something like oh, that. Oh, Fight Club. Fight Club. Fight Club. I ain't got that on my head. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not. <laughs> Let's not. We also have with us uh, Laura. Caballero from the oh, PIO's Laura, office as well. Laura, right now. Laura, you're but, awesome, Laura. Of course, I'm Gustavo Reveles, the director of communications for the school district. And we have a special guest today. We do. Doc, we have uh, uh, state royalty, if you must. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have our school board vice president and the newly minted president of the Texas Association of School Boards, uh, Armando Mando Rodriguez. Welcome, Mando. Mando. Thank you all for having me. Um, looking forward to the discussion ahead. Yeah, so so we are we are uh, having you uh, as guests, particularly because uh, just a little over two weeks ago, you were sworn in as the president of TASB, which is a pretty big deal. Uh, you are, in essence, the first El Pasoan in more than 25 years to hold this this uh, office, and only the third El Pasoan in the history of TASB to have this title. Uh, so it's pretty special, uh, uh, you know, accolade for, for you, for El Paso, for kind of the UISD. Um, tell us a little bit about TASB and why it's such an important and influential organization. So um, TASB, as we know, uh, there's more than 5 million uh, plus public school children that we're looking at really having an impact and helping those uh, kids succeed and have any and every opportunity to really have a, a an impact in today's society. Uh, so that's our main focus is the kids. But um, what our goal is to help build the capacity of board members uh, and over a thousand plus school districts across uh, the state uh, of Texas with more than seven thousand school board members, and so. Uh, we are an association that um, helps build their capacity and then we try to help school districts to uh, either be more efficient or to provide resources uh, especially those that don't have uh, certain capacities and so our our goal is always to have uh, an impact on school districts but at the end of the day it has a true impact in the lives of uh, our public school children, which is the most important. Yeah, right. Mondo, we we eat seven thousand. It's a lot. A lot of school board. A lot of trustees out there. A lot of different opinions. A lot of how things should be and how things. And again, different races, different colors, different sizes, different mindsets. How how do you? as an organization or task, I mean, all of your president, right? You're, you're a Latino, you're a Mexicano, half Puerto Rican, half Mexicano, great cultures. How do you bring all the, this, these differences on how kids should learn in to, that we're all row, rowing, going the same way? Well, what's your well, mindset? I think for, for me, what I've, um, known to understand and grown to learn about is the important role that school board members uh, take in regards to the governance part of it and how you could have a true impact uh, and and just to give a history I've been almost uh, you know almost 20 years of experience uh, on the Canotillo school board and first getting in was you know I want to you know you get all eager trying to do something uh, and then you start learning what your role is uh, which is the governance part and how you could really have an impact if you allow uh, the model to work which is what we've seen uh, in our ups and downs over the years we've continued to see 
growth in our district because we've been focused on kids and, and really setting high expectations and that's where uh, when school board members are able to focus uh, the role, um, laser focus even better, uh, you could see some significant changes in our communities uh, that we represent. So I think I think key here is the partnership between school board members and and superintendents, right? Um, and understanding the role that each plays in moving the school district forward. I think a lot of times uh, both superintendents and school board members misunderstand their duties and their responsibilities. But it's like you said, when you understand it and you let the model work, that school districts function well. Uh, uh, we're lucky to have a school board that understands that and is invested in making sure that we we move forward in a, in a capacity that 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 really respects that model um, and uh, but I don't want to I don't want you to get away from that question that Dr. G but for because it's, it's pretty special you're you're um, you know uh, let's be honest this is an organization that for many many years has had leadership that doesn't quite reflect the student population of Texas um, you know you being not just you know of Hispanic descent, but also being from the border, you're, you're reflecting really the growth of the, our student population in Texas. Like, how important is it that TASB, this, this very influential organization, is moving in the direction to, to where its leadership is also reflecting Texas? Well, I, I think one is a reflection. The other is the understanding of the community it represents, right? And so I think we have to address that in two different areas. I think reflection will take time, but most importantly is how do we um, allow, or how do we grow as either a local community or a state community in regards to our diverse backgrounds and our different uh, beliefs and values, right? And so for me, the conversation I've had with my colleagues uh, at a state level is for far too long they've wanted us working in silos, right? Uh, whether that may be uh, gender, whether that may be uh, culture, or whether that may be um, certain beliefs or party affiliations, right? And I, I think for, for me it's breaking down those silos and seeing where we could find some common ground and really having an impact on uh, communities across the, the, the state of Texas and not necessarily, um, you know, uh, whether it's uh, gender, race, or social economic status, right? Like we, we really focus sometimes uh, on issues that they try to uh, bring up in a silo way or a wedge issue. Uh, to have us working against each other instead of, uh, you know, we have poor kids in all communities. Mm -hmm. um, and so sometimes they try to frame that discussion differently. But if we really focus on all kids, we're going to see a, a tremendous success. And I think that's where kind of Theo has really led. And I, I think my colleagues over the years, I know we've had split boards. I've been in the minority and I've been in the majority but most importantly uh, I've always focused on really making sure all kids succeed doesn't matter uh, what their social economic uh, background is their their gender their um, uh, race it, it's important for us to set high expectations for all kids and support our staff so that way we could really have an impact and so I think uh, for me um, in the short term is having people understand my values, my community, uh, and and being able to learn and appreciate from different uh, values and communities that don't reflect me as well. So. Right. So, Mondo, as, as TASB president, Senor Presidente, what's, what's your, I mean, what's your marching orders? What do you, what do you, first line of business, this is, if I had three priorities during my presidential time, these are the three things I want to, or one thing, I don't know, but what, what, what do you want, what do you wish to accomplish this um, year and what, what legacy, when people think of Mondo, president from TASB, you know, man, this, this dude really did this, or this dude was, was about this, and this is what Your he legacy. Did. Yeah, your legacy, yeah. this is. Um, 
I think, you know, TASB is a well-run organization that has had an impact for many years. And so they have the structures and systems in place that will continue to do the good work. But as far as my presidency is, is very- Did you just do a commercial for TASB? <laughs> no, <laughs> so, no, so like... no they, they, they're, they're, I, I respect and I, I, I appreciate uh, the confidence that my uh, colleagues across the state um, have entrusted me uh, because it, it is uh, something proud to be part of. Um, but uh, when you're looking at the work that needs to continue is building the capacity in our communities and how that looks like or what that comes about is a discussion we're currently having. And that's, that's my biggest thing is how do we build uh, leadership capacity cross-sectionally in every areas in the state of Texas that have a understanding of what the ability public education could do and the impact it has had and how we could really expand that by really uh, making sure that we put the pressure on individuals that are trying to uh, you know, have us work in silos, work against each other, and don't want to see public education fail. Uh, so it, it's very important that our community uh, understands, or our communities across the state uh, are able to build upon capacity, uh, whether it's a parent engagement program, whether it's a uh, leadership type of program, uh, whether it's uh, student leadership, it's, it's important for us uh, to not only educate uh, the different facets of public education, but also uh, the importance that we could play if we really support uh, public education and uh, for all kids to succeed, but at the end of the day for um, teachers to be valued and, and really respected is important uh, for us as we move forward, especially in these times. And, uh, you know, advocacy is part of part of your charge. You know, I know that, that even before you became president of TASB, you've been a fierce advocate of, of public education. Uh, um, knowing full well that your membership is varied, right? It's not, it's not one size fits all. Um, but you're 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 going to bring up some issues, right? Uh, as far as advocacy goes, what are some of those issues that you think you can uh, push for, uh, especially as as we see public ed be under attack? Um, one, of course, is funding, uh, and I, I think the current short-term battle that we see is is vouchers, as we know, vouchers um, will not have an impact, but it's just a way to, um, it, it, it will have an impact in regards to uh, public schools, but it will not have an impact for a parent uh, to choose where that voucher might go. And so uh, it's very important to, uh, for us to be cognizant of the fact that there's rhetoric around uh, that discussion and uh, that it, there's some malintent behind it and it's not about um, you know parents choice uh, it's mainly about really redirecting resources uh, that are are gonna harm public schools yeah I, I think uh, what parents uh, who are very superficially aware of vouchers they might they might see it as something good, right? Because they say, oh man, they're gonna give me money for a private school. But what they don't understand is, A, those are funds that would have otherwise gone to uh, to public schools. And B, um, it doesn't guarantee you a place at a the private school that you wanna go to. Uh, it doesn't even guarantee that that, public, that private school you wanna go to will even accept vouchers. Yeah. Uh, I think there's a belief that the most elite schools in Texas will not accept public vouchers. They, they don't want 
they want to stay selective. They want to stay exclusive. I think that when you're talking about school choice and the rhetoric, yeah. the choice lies in the hand of the private institution right. and or religious institution. And so it's their choice to decide what kids they want in their uh in their campus or in their uh, organization versus the parents. It's not the parents' yeah. choice, but it, it, we we see the rhetoric behind that and it's saying it's parents' choice. It's, well, it's, it, it's, 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 it goes back to like the accountability system, A, B, C, D, right? And it's easy, but it's easy to say, it's, a, it's an easy sell, P- parent choice, parent choice. It's a, it's a very easy, but there's so much underneath it like an iceberg and there's so much yeah. stuff since we're on air I won't use other words I would rather say <laughs> that that it is it's very underhanding because not only are you going to defund public schools you're also going to defund all these charter schools yeah. so charter schools because everyone wants to get to that cathedral what cathedral is what 15,000 no, no, that's cheap. <laughs> you know, uh, that's more than that. Yeah. And 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 you know, cathedral cathedral does a good job of doing what it needs to do, right? Yeah. With, uh, with, but with it's not. Who they get. But who they get, uh, and and that's precisely it. And they have also the ability to say, like, you know what, you you you, you don't fit here. You don't belong here. And, and I'm not talking about. I don't care how many our fathers you yeah. say or it's, it may not be a good fit, right? <laughs> You're going uh, back to public school uh, because it's you know because maybe you have uh, special needs or because you have other you know whatever it is. Uh, we don't have that luxury. Public schools don't have the luxury of turning anyone down. You know, uh, we must educate every single kid that comes through our doors, and we take pride in that. But we also take take you know a lot of uh, uh, a, a lot of BS because of that because that you know those kids may be more difficult to educate and it takes more resources and it takes uh, teachers that have more experience it takes teachers that have different certifications I mean it is more expensive to educate a child that has special needs it's more difficult to educate a child that has uh, disciplinary needs these are things that that private schools don't deal with and we do and, and we do it gladly, and we do it because it's our charge. But but we, it's not a level playing field. We are not being judged the same way. I kind of wonder, I don't mean it, just how it's going to work if, if I'm a parent, I take my voucher, and I go to this school, and I give them to it, and then they, the, the, the school kicks them out. Yeah. Where does that money go? Yeah, where's that money? Is it, do you get it back? The, the accountability it? and the transparency, right? Yeah. Um, there, there's a lot of factors that aren't uh, part of the discussion, but when you try to make it seem it's it's parents' choice, it's it's not, uh, or even the kids' choice. It's so my dog to take you back because I was there when you there that. Saturday, Saturday, right? Yeah. When you got the gavel, president, and again, very respectful. Again, condolences to your mom. But when you're up there, and you see a conglomerate of how many school districts in Texas? Uh, a thousand plus. Thousand plus. Seven thousand. Like seven. About five about million about kids. Five million kids. And here, what was that feeling? Like, were you like, holy? I know you're blessing your mom. I saw your tears. I saw your family that was there. It was beautiful. When your sister gave you the bendición, and what was that like? Well, it, it, it means a lot. Um, but more importantly, is the work that needs to be done for each and every one of those five million plus school children in, in Texas is is a real um, what keeps me going right. Um, not only just in our community, but in the state and even in the country and sometimes the rest of, of uh, the world. We know that public education is an equalizer to society and public education provides opportunities, but it also allows, I believe, for healing, right? Especially in these times when we're able to understand uh, different um, regions, uh, different cultures and really the history that has happened, uh, especially uh, what's going on in the Middle East, right? Um, The public being able to understand that, I think gives us not only the equalizer to society, but the ability to 
mutually respect differences and understand how we could really grow together uh, by working on our commonalities and not dividing um, within uh, you know issues that have been going on for years um, well, centuries so, you know I, in both of you says you both I, I, I do want to talk about Israel yeah because that that you know that's a crisis what's going on both of you went there yes right so now what do you think now that you I mean I see it in the news but you actually were there mm -hmm. saw the Gaza Strip saw the, the, the armored cars and all that mm -hmm. I, 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 you know, Manda, you, you and I just to explain to the to the public. I we're involved uh, with APAC, the uh, American Israeli Public Affairs Committee. Uh, this is a group, uh, a pro-Israel group, uh, that lobbies uh, in favor of of um, Israel here in the United States. We've been very involved in that in that organization. Uh, have traveled to Israel with them, uh, and have continued to stay involved with with their efforts. Uh, you know, and seeing what's happening over there after having gone, having spoken with both uh, Jews and Muslims and Arabs and, and, and um, you know, knowing the full potential of Israel and what it means to have democracy, uh, what it means to have, um, you know, equality and, and, and in that region, you know, it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking because you you want to you want to find uh, an understanding of of peace and and bringing together two groups of people that that don't agree or don't seem to fit but like trying to find a commonality uh, and and they've been trying you know there's been you know they take one step forward and two steps back and you you're hopeful but it seems like right now we've we've come to a position to where it's just going to 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 get worse before it gets better and it's heartbreaking yeah I, I, I think for me um, being able to go to Israel and being able to uh, get educated on the situation uh, in Israel and Middle East and not only uh, get a you know get that better understanding I came back wanting to learn more about others, um, especially the Palestinian people. We, we were able to speak to the Palestinian mm -hmm. government and we were able to get some uh, questions, And but, but it's a very complicated situation uh, that goes back centuries, right? And uh, it, it's been divided and, and that's pretty much what uh, the discussion I previously had or the conversation I was talking about earlier was, uh, you know, for for us to want the best for the Israeli people and as well as the Palestinian people, there's some internal stuff that has to happen within uh, certain governments because we want, we, I want a, a free Israel and I want a free uh, Palestine, Palestine. Uh, and, and it's important for us to work towards that goal but it, it's there. There's two silos there that, um, for for many years, um, it's very complicated. And I, I just want the best for both uh, the Palestinian people and the Israeli people. And I hope um, there's been different solutions over the years. Um, we just need to figure out how uh, they can work together uh, for a better. Um, uh, area of our, our of our world that needs peace at this time yeah, yeah. no I guess because it, it sounds again hey, my, my thoughts and prayers go out to that region of, of the world and Israel and Palestine and all the kids and moms and dads that are living there are going through this but you're talking about the human being and the complexity and the simplicity of the human being the systems but if you take that to to what you're about to face as Tasby president, basically what you defined as going to learn each other's, you know, commonalities to create a common good. Because you want free public schools. That's what this country is, is about. Free public schools. 
like you want to free Israel, free Palestine, but you, but you want to, and it's all become that education and respecting of differences and respecting of cultures and respecting of each other in order to create a common good for today and tomorrow. So I just, I just think, am I, I'm connecting it and I was never there because you guys were there and I respect that. But, you know, I just think of what you're going through and I think of, and I'm just gonna say it because my nephews went there, Prosper ISD, to McKellen ISD, to Houston ISD, to Canotillo, and, and all these different ISDs to find that commonality of how to educate this this child, this little Sophia, little Jose, little you know Jeff or Brian or you know Ikte which is Korean, so I just, I think it's amazing what you're about to, and I, and I commend you for, for wanting to do that, because not everyone wants to do that. And, and interesting enough, you know, uh, talking about haters, but uh, I guess when you're trying haters to- gonna <laughs> Haters gonna hate, haters <laughs> gonna hate. Uh, but you know, when you're trying to do what's right, I think um, going back to my mom and her raising me, I think my mindset and my, values of family and helping others is something that guides me every day and uh, whether you love me or hate me I'm gonna continue to do what I believe it's in the best interest of being able to build a better whether it's a better Canotillo whether it's a better El Paso or a better Texas or the US or even this world right I just want to lean on uh, my friends and family that support that continue to do the work that needs to be done and for me it's not about recognition the haters think it is but you could try to stop me but I, I think trying to well you can't stop me but you could try it right uh, I'm gonna continue to do what's right uh, and building capacities in our communities and more importantly providing opportunity for every kid and that's something that I've done over the past 20 something years uh, in my community in Canotillo and I'm going to continue to do that uh, whether you love me or you hate me. Well, I, you know I think when you, when you really it's love, hate, whatever it's just or jealousy. Jeal could be uh, for, probably that that hair that beautiful hair you have and that smile you have is is that and I, and I and I equate it to this of Martin Luther King. I know I'm not Martin Luther King, but how many people told him not to march? How many people, even his own, you know I mean? How many Cesar Chavez don't, you know, Rosa Parks don't sit in there. So, and if they would have listened to all the negative, you know, people telling you why, instead of the why not, this country wouldn't be here like we are today you know so I, I commend you because you're always going to have people telling you not to do something whether they hate you or love you it's just but but I think you just go forward and very respectfully screw them that's why I don't I don't listen to social media or listen to that all that nonsense it's just but I want to go back to your mom what what values and I know she's a great, she is, but a great woman. I've had, you know, my 10 years, I've lots of kisses and hugs from her. What values did she instill in you as a, as a child to today that as you go on? I think uh, I would have to say love and compassion um, for family, for community, and for helping others. Um, she, she, she prayed the rosary so many times and um, probably that's why I'm here today, but. Uh, she probably prayed during, <laughs> when you're, during your fraternity days. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure she did. Um, and so uh, I, I think uh, being able to, whether it's love a person or an organization or a community, um, and, and do the work passionately 
um, to help improve, to put systems and structures, uh, to move the needle, and and to really, really, you know, do do what's right. I think she she had a heart of gold, and um, probably um, that's probably why I'm a crybaby. Um, because of her uh, but that's a testament to the passion and the love I have uh, for her and for my community beautiful no I was but speaking of community I was at UTEP today with President Wilson and picks up picks up up with President (laughs) Sarata Dr. Sarata it's a beautiful campus it is it is it is what they're doing with the computer science and engineering I have to shout out to Miss Tabor, because she is like some fellow there at UTEP, but I didn't even know I feel bad that they kept mentioning her name. Laura yeah. Tabor? That, that, Catherine. T- yeah, yeah, Catherine oh, okay. Tabor. Who's Laura Tabor? This is Laura T- Tabor at UTEP, I believe. No, no, anyway. it's Catherine Tabor at Northwest Early College and what she's doing in the computer science. and. But it's a, you know, they're talking about computers. They only had when they started, first started like well, 400, like people, kids wanting to be part of computer science. Now they have over 1,400. And so they're really, we're getting together. It's like, how can we better, you know, get more computer science and engineering to, to, the, to, the, to that beautiful campus? And well, you told me the story of, what was that country? Bhutan. Bhutan. <laughs> actually, Bhutanese I, architecture. Actually, they have a, a exhibit right now. Yeah, they always they will always have something Bhutan related at yeah. UTEP. Yeah, that's a beautiful museum. It's a beautiful, beautiful architecture, beautiful campus, and you know, uh, we have three miners sitting at this table right here, and um, you know, we'll continue to do uh, have great partnerships with them. Um, we have three UT miners, and we have one UT. Longhorn. Longhorn. <laughs> but we're all part of it. Uh, you got to give credit to where credit is due. And, um, Dr. Natalicio broke barriers. Um, she did. And, and she did that with passion. And people told her no. I mean, there was, there was you know, state representatives, senators, and telling her, you know, providing access to what this community looks like um, hurt in a way that didn't look like other universities, but it broke barriers and it created opportunities for many of our people in this community that it was reflective and representative. And at the same time, it really provided uh, an opportunity for many of our communities to change the trajectory and to be able to have an impact in our El Paso community and across the world. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, we are running a little bit late, so we're gonna cut it off here. We're just gonna say, picks up, go Miners. Picks up, picks go Horns, go Packers. <laughs> and uh, Mando again, congratulations. We're Let's expecting great things this Let's year. Go. The work continues. The work continues, always was Lauda. Say hi to your 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 doggies. And if you got dogs that bite, don't, don't go to Gus's house. It's love. It's a, it's a love tap. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys. We will see you next week here in Canadio Combo. Thank you.